Welcome back, everybody. I had a different draft of this episode, but it all got lost due to uh, computer uh, difficulties. It seems uh, fate has ordained that I just start over with this episode, so uh, here it is. And on this episode, I've got a special guest star. I invited the Hodge Twins. Say hello, Hodge Twins. Just kidding, they're not actually here. But wouldn't it be funny if they were? Well, I guess funny's a, a bit of a stretch, but I guess maybe unusual? I don't know where this bit's going. So anyway, um, Sonic's in the, uh, the Water World, like the movie Water World, starring Kevin Kastner. Here's some gaming trivia that those flaming homosexuals at Digino you know Gaming won't tell you. Now, the movie Waterworld came out around the same time as Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and there were plans to do a crossover, you see. They were going to have Kevin Kastner be the, uh, the boss of this world. But at the last minute, they decided to change it to uh, Dr. Robotnik, because they thought that would uh, fit the theme of the game better. Yeah, they won't tell you that on Digino you know Gaming, because it's completely and utterly false. But anyway, um, what else? Uh, you might have noticed that the uh, music is a bit uh, different. Hey, this isn't what it's supposed to sound like. I, I don't know what voice that was. Anyway, but the uh, the music got screwed up in this video, but only for the first three minutes. So I had to splice in something else. So anyway, here's a fun thought exercise related to Sonic. So, since we're looking at Sonic 3 here, and we never quite got a proper Sonic 4, I mean we did, but nobody counts that, but imagine for a second that we got an actual direct sequel to this game that came out on either the Genesis or the Saturn. Do you think they would have introduced a new animal buddy? Because, I mean, they introduced Tails in Sonic 2, and then Knuckles in Sonic 3. Surely they would have kept up that trend, don't you think? Who would it have been? Maybe it would have been like a Jasper the Bonobo or something? If I was a real Let's Play channel with triple-digit followers, someone would probably make a Jasper the Bonobo fan art, but, but that's neither here nor there. And, if such a game existed, do you think they would have gone with pre-rendered sprites? Or would they, try, uh, would they have tried to uh, go a more traditional route? Personally, I think they would have gone the pre-rendered route and would have made something that looks like uh, Donkey Kong Country or that weird Brazilian Sonic game that came out for the Master System. Because 2D games were really just going out of style at the time, so the only way you could really justify a 2D game and 1995 to, uh, I don't know, 2000 whatever, was to have it be pre-rendered. So yeah, I think they would have gone with that. So that Brazilian uh, Sonic Master System game, uh, Sonic Blast, is uh, actually quite good. I mean, much more than you'd expect given the uh, circumstances of how it would made. I mean, forget... Ah, damn it. There was a part in the bonus stage where you were supposed to uh, jump into the red and then it would take you to a secret area, but uh, obviously that wasn't the spot. So now we're not gonna get the Chaos Emerald. I've never actually gotten all the Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 3 before. I think that might be a fun project for someday. Well, fun in air quotes. I think it would be more frustrating than anything else. I mean, I ain't the completionist. So, um, with this boss, it uh, reminds me of uh, a different boss in Sonic 3 once where uh, I got stuck. You're probably thinking, how do you get stuck on a Sonic boss of all things? It's such a simple game. But anyway, I made the mistake of trying to look up a walkthrough of a Sonic game. And that's how I discovered that one wackadoodle, uh, what the hell's that guy's name? Uh, Cobermani64 or whatever his name was. The video he made, it was like a... A mostly normal video, but then just one thing went wrong and he just started screaming and you realize, oh, this person has autism. How long can we keep this sign in the air? 
Go, go, go! It's like that game you play as a kid where you try to keep the balloon in the air for as long as possible and, and then it pops unexpectedly and you, it's all very upsetting because you're just so damn sensitive. Or maybe that only happened to me. Well, regardless, that's the uh, end of that level. Uh, don't mind me, just discreetly making a save state. I mean, can you blame me? For those of you who've played this game, you know that this level doesn't exactly fuck around. You gotta be fast as the blue blur himself. Sega was pretty crazy back then with the type of decisions they'd make. God, fuck all this traffic going by. Where the hell are you people even going? Every moment of every day. But anyway, Sega made all kinds of crazy decisions back in the day. You ever think about how objectively uh, preposterous it is that they managed to get Michael Jackson to compose the music for this game? You could conceivably say that he was the most famous person in the world at the time, and somehow Sega managed to book him as their composer. Anything was possible with se with uh, with 90s Sega. You could have a boombox that plays Genesis games. You could have a console that plugs into another console. You could uh, buy military training software from the U.S. military and. I guess that's kind of redundant. And reprogram it to make arcade games. That actually happened, by the way. The uh, Model 1 arcade board was purchased from the uh, U.S. government and uh, reprogrammed to make Virtua Fighter 1. That information is out there somewhere. I believe it was uh, a Yu Suzuki who did the uh, programming, or at least the majority of programming on that project. That must have been a heck of a thing to do, to take something that's not a video game and, and turn it into one. You know, everybody gives Yuji Naka all the credit for being the most creative person at Sega, but Yuji... Fuck. But Yu Suzuki, he was the real brains of the operation, if you ask me. He made uh, Shenmue and Space Harrier, and uh, there was the arcade conversion thing that I just mentioned, and uh, other games, I presume. Yu Suzuki was an alright guy. It's kinda sad to think about how all of our favorite 90s gaming personalities are starting to get all old and decrepit. At this point, Yuji Naka... Fucking, I keep calling him by the wrong name. I keep saying how great he is and then I can't even remember his damn name. But at this point, Yu Suzuki's probably like 65 years old and he's all wrinkly and probably in the early stages of age-related macular degeneration, and his nutsack probably looks like a tent that you don't know how to fold up. Yeah, there's a word picture for you. This is gross. Let's, let's get off of this. So, um, did you guys ever watch those, uh, uh Sonic Dorkly skits that they did back in the day? Uh, that's, that's kind of a shit question to ask, isn't it? Who the hell watches Dorkly? You know, I can kind of understand why they went out of business. I mean, if you're just gonna, you know, just shit out just painfully unfunny content every single day, I mean, who, who's even the audience for that? But anyway, the, the premise of the Sonic ones was pretty much what you'd expect. It, it's basically just robot chicken of her, 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 cutesy cartoon character in adult situations. There are so many ways you can take this. Oh, Dorkly, nothing against you, but uh, I'm glad you're gone. You know, I spend all this time making fun of Dorkly when, in a technical sense, I guess they are a better channel than I am. Uh-oh, Idris Elba's coming to hit the button. Anyway, but uh, Dorkly's got, like, professional voice actors and at least some kind of animation and... I ain't got any of that. All I've got is uh, cameos from Thomas Sowell Jr. I was gonna try to find a clip of Thomas Sowell saying something and splice it into the episode and pretend like he was a guest on the show, but uh, I really couldn't find anything that wouldn't uh, get me in trouble, so to speak. 
Oh well, what are you gonna do? So how about that, uh, that Sonic movie that's coming out, eh? I saw the first one a couple of years ago and I thought it would be like a, a good social opportunity to meet some other Sega fans, but it definitely wasn't that. It definitely wasn't that. So there are two ways to do this boss battle. You can either use those gusts of water to launch yourself up into the air and try to get through things faster, or if you're just like a fucking panty waist, you can wait for Robotnik to come down and then get one hit on him and make this boss battle ten times as long. It's up to you. You know what they say, a man chooses, a slave obeys. And in this case, you can choose how you want to fight Dr. Robotnik. Get the ring, Tails. Get the ring. Ah, damn it. You stupid idiot. This is a very slow moving boss battle. Slower than Gabe Newell trotting to the Valve offices to develop Half Life 3. I'm sure someday he'll get there. We just gotta give him time, right? Surely one of these days, Half-Life 3 and Rayman 4 and all those other vaporware games are just, uh, just gonna magically fall from the sky. Just have to give it time. Uh, did I ever get the... Uh, I can't talk today. Did I ever show you guys that uh, statue of uh, Krusty the Clown I bought the other day? Yeah, let me put a picture of it on screen. <laughs> 